Probably All right, so yeah, let's do number three. But before we do number three, we need to the, we need to see the correction for number two. Um, there's a a drain rate that was somehow left off. And let's see, where can we find that? D of t equals 0.04 t cubed, negative 0.04 t cubed plus 0.4 t squared, plus 0.96 t. So, I don't know how that happened. I apologize. Um, let's kind of briefly look through two, and then we'll actually do three. How many cubic feet of rainwater flowed into the pipe? Um, so that would be the integral of r from 0 to 8. Part B, is the amount of water in the pipe increasing or decreasing at time 3? Well, that would that would mean uh, R minus D at 3, if that's positive or negative. Let's go from 0 to 8 of R. At what time, 0 to 8, is the amount of water in the pipe at a minimum? So that would be when... Uh, R minus D changes negative to positive. And part D, the pipe can hold 50 cubic feet of water before overflowing. For time greater than 8, water continues to flow into and out of the pipe at the given rates until the pipe begins to overflow. Right, but do not solve an equation involving one or more integrals when the pipe will begin to overflow. So when something equals 50, we're going to be overflowing. So let's see. It started at 30. It adds from 0 to t r minus d. So when that equals 50, then it overflows. So I'd answer number two without really doing any work. But what? That was weird. That was a super fast version of number two. We'll do number three for real. Correct, because the amount of water in the pipe, so like water would be 20 plus the integral from 0 to time of r minus d dt. That's how much water is in the pipe. So the rate the water is changing, W prime would just be R minus D. And you want to know when that, or what that's doing at time three. And with the calculator, I mean, the details are in the calculator. So that's super fast. <laughs> we did number two in two minutes. Uh, not really, because we'd have to type some things in. But let's do number three. And then that will leave you to finish two, and then you'll be done. All right, brass clippings problem. Grass clippings are placed in a bin where they decompose. Uh, for 0 to 30, the amount of grass clippings remains remaining in the bin is modeled by... Okay, so that's not a rate. That's the amount of clippings in the bin. 6.687... 0.931 to the t, where a is measured in pounds and t is measured in days. So a is not a rate. That is that is pounds of grass sitting in the bin. So this one is a little bit different than the others. Find the average rate of change. Good morning, KHS students and staff. Teachers, if you are in an EOC testing room, please begin reading instructions at this time. Students, if you are taking the EOC this morning, please make sure your cell phone is turned off and turned into your testing teacher. You may not have your phone or any electronic device at your desk until all tests are complete and all testing materials have been turned in. Good luck, Mustang. Average rate of change. So average rate of change, A rock, algebra slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Although we don't have y's and x's, we've got a's and t's. 
indicate units of measure. That means there's a point attached to um, getting the right units on this problem. Uh, a is in pounds. T is in days. So whatever my uh, answer is will be in pounds per day. That's all the work you could need to show. You could jump straight to the answer. Um, I'm going to put it in for A, assuming I'll need it. Or I'm going to put A in for Y1, assuming I'll need it multiple times here. 0.687 times 0.931 to the X. And then, yeah, I can even go... Y1 at 30 minus <coughs> Y1 at 0. I should put all that in parentheses. Divided by 30. And so I can jump straight to an answer um, without showing any more work than, than I've shown. Because they'll, they'll know that you got that in the calculator. Negative 0.197 pounds per day. Average rate of change. Um, does it make sense that it's negative? Why does it make sense that it's negative? I agree with you. Because it's decomposing. So yeah, it's the amount of grass is, is decaying. So it does make sense that that's negative. Um, I suppose we could even look at the graph of it. Um, the y values are pretty good. X values don't look great there. Oh, it even said 0 to 30. So I can just graph this thing from 0 to 30. And it would start at 6.687. So we can just start it. In, I guess. See how that looks. There we go. So there's a picture of, of what's happening. Part B. Using the, whoops, find the value of A prime at 15. Using correct units, interpret the meaning of the value in the context of the problem. A prime of 15. You know, units would be easier if we wrote it as d a d t at 15. That would make units a lot easier because now I can see the units are whatever a is divided by time, so pounds per day. Which which is the same unit as a or part a. But that's because part A was an average rate of change. Part B is an instantaneous rate of change. So they should have the same units. Um, this, is, this is also enough work shown because your calculator can find dy dx at 15. And again, you, your calculator can do all that. So you don't have to, you don't have to be the one that does it. Pounds per day. Using correct units, interpret the meaning. Okay, so I got the correct units, found the value. Now I need to interpret the meaning of that value. So let's say grass is decaying. At a rate, that's probably a keyword they're looking for, of negative 0.164 pounds per day on day 15. So they're probably looking for rate and day 15.
we'll look at the uh, solution in a minute with the point values. Part C. Find the time t for which the amount of grass clippings in the bin is equal to the average amount of grass clippings in the bin. Okay, so average value. We saw this yesterday. We have to have this memorized. 1 over b minus a integral from a to b of the function. So 1 over 30, integral 0 to 30 of a of t dt. Find the time for which the grass clippings is equal to the average. Well, so we've got to find the average first. Do that in the calculator as well. Um, we do 1 30th first times math 9, 0 to 30 of y1 dx. Average amount of grass clippings is two point seven five two six dot dot dot. Uh, I put the dot 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 and carry more than three because that's not my final answer. So I need to be careful. Like if that was my final answer for something, uh, two point seven five three would be fine. But since I'm going to use that later, I probably need to carry more to make sure my final answer is accurate to three decimal places. So I want to know when the when the graph equals that. I'm going to store that. Ooh, a is maybe a not the best value since all of these are named a, but the calculator didn't know that. So I'm going to graph my average value. Here's one way to do it. Um, so what I want to know is when does the function equal 2.7526. So I could do that um, sort of algebraically and natural log both sides and move things around. But like, why bother? It's, it's a calculator problem. Use the calculator. So I want to know when those intersect. This is kind of uh, an IBT for integrals problem, because IBT guarantees that it'll happen somewhere between 0 and 30. And with the intersection of the first curve and the second curve, and it happens at 12.415. question to make sure you answered what they asked. Find the time t for which the amount of grass clippings in the bin equals the average value of the clippings in the bin over that interval. So we did that. Found the average value. We set it equal to a of t and let the calculator do the hard work. Question d. Anticipating a hard one just because it's question D. For T greater than 30, okay, so that equation we had was good, like that's good 0 to 30. Beyond 30, the linear approximation to A at T equals 30 is a better amount, is a better model for the amount of grass clippings remain in the bin. Use L of T to predict the time at which there will be 0.5 pound of grass clipping in the bin. Show the work that leads to your answer. Okay, so for 0 to 30, we're using A of T, and we have that. For T greater than 30, we want some linear model. So I need a, um, I 
need a, a line so I need a X and a Y and an M but I need it to attach right like I needed to I needed to pick up right there and continue on Let's see how to graph this Like at 30, I need it to be a line. There's A and there's L. But I need it to match up like just perfectly. So I need the slope to be the same and I need that point to be the same. So I need the point at 30 and I need the slope at 30 and I will use that point and that slope and sort of make the jump from the A curve to the L curve. So the M I need is A prime at 30. Okay, I can find that on the calculator. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the average value line on there. I don't need to see that anymore. So I want the slope at 30 and the point at 30. And I'll use that to make my line that takes over at 30. So I can calc dy dx at 30. It's point negative 0.05 um, to three decimal places. I should be OK. So 0.05. Five nine seven six. You can always write more, and they will only grade the first three. So if you write more, you're okay. And the point we'll use is thirty comma. Oh, we could be cute and just put a of thirty, because that's how we're going to find that point. Second calc value at thirty point seven eight two nine two seven. Okay, so I'm almost there. Use that L to predict the time when there will be point five pounds of grass left. So my line is Y minus. Point seven eight. I should probably call that something, and then I don't have to keep writing it. But I can store that as B if I wanted to. Oh, that's the slope. I better be careful. Yeah, just back to old school, writing it out here. want to know when that equals 0.5. So y equals negative 0.055976 t minus 30 plus 0.782927 dot dot dot. I'm going to put all that in the calculator and do the intersection thing. I mean, I could set it equal to 0.5 and just do the algebra, but I've got a calculator. Let the calculator do it. Let's see. Negative 0.055976 x minus 30 plus 0.782927. That's not going to show up, well, it is showing up on my graph, but it's not going to get to 1 half until after 30. Or it better not get to 1 half until after 30, or else I did something wrong. Change up my table a little bit. 
So there's my, it's a little bit misleading because my line doesn't really, yeah, I don't know if this is going to make it better or worse to, to graph both of these things. So from 0 to 30, it's the top line. And then at 30, why is that doesn't look right? X scale 10, 10, 20, 30. Oh, yeah, right in here. Right at 30, the line takes over. I'm going to turn this one off because that's in the way now. Here we go. So there's my line. It's really only accurate past 30. I want to know where it intersects 5 or 0.5. Second calc intersect first curve, second curve at day 35.054. Three cheers for part D of the problem, right? <laughs> Let's go back through and see if I can find I wanna I wanna check my answer basically. Let's look at the solutions. See if I mess something up. Surely not. It's free response topic three solutions. I'll look at that in a minute. Yeah. Let me check my work here. So negative 0.197, got that. Um, and that was that was only one point for that answer. So got my one point for that part. Part B was worth two points, answer with explanation. So I got the answer right. The amount of grass clippings is decreasing at a rate of 0.164. Got that right. Part C, two points, 12.145 days. Got that. So five of the nine points are in A, B, and C. If you get all of those, five out of nine is 55. You're on track for about a four. So again, if D's hard, that's okay. That's the part that gets people up to a five. And if you're stuck at a four, I'm mean, still a good score. Part four, 35.054. I got the answer right. Expression for the line. Setting it equal to 0.5, and then the answer. So, again, fight for every point you can. Um, but if you don't get to part D, or there's some parts that you're just like, I'm not sure what's going on there, do your best. And again, hope you get A, B, C part to get your four. And then if you eke out some extra points somewhere, maybe you can sneak up to a five. That's the, the goal. Well... Hopefully a four is a goal and three is okay and five is great. That's... All right, so the, again, fix number two. And then, of course, I'll see first period tomorrow. Um, but this is what's due. Don't forget the video as well.